Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video let's check out how we can take animations that we already have and pretty much create new dynamic animations starting from those. This is a great method, especially if you're not an animator just like I'm not. I'm going to showcase a specific example, but this method is extremely versatile. We're going to look at how to take a basic idle animation and make the character move the arm to grab an item. But like I said, with this exact same method, you could also make a character wonk or idle while carrying a heavy object. Or maybe start from an idle animation, make it point towards something, or many other unique animations. Again, this is not an animation tutorial, but rather learning how to start from basic generic animations and then dynamically apply some changes to get the unique animations you want. Do you want to learn Unity, Blender and programming patterns? Then check out my curated CodeMonkey bundle with a link in the description. This is a collaboration with GameDevTV, all of their courses have the highest rating possible, I got in touch with them to specifically select three courses to make a nice complete bundle to take you from beginner to advanced. I chose their Ultimate Unity 3D course, this one will teach you both Unity and C Sharp, both starting completely from scratch. Then the Blender 3D modeling course, I picked this one up myself a few months ago and I've learned a ton thanks to it. And the final one is a more advanced, really interesting programming course, all about programming patterns. It's excellent for helping you massively improve the quality of your code, which in turn helps you make better games faster. I chose all of these courses myself to really give you a nice path to go from beginner to advanced. The bundle has a really nice discount, so check it out with the link in the description. Okay, so like I said, I'm not an animator. So when I use animations in my videos or my games, I have to go to the store and buy them. For normal things, that's great. It's very easy to find some generic walking or idle animations, or even some using weapons. But sometimes I can't find the exact animation that I'm looking for. So in that case, you would assume that you need to make a new animation yourself. So maybe unload the model into Blender or Maya and build the animations from scratch. However, another approach you can take is to use an existing animation that is close enough to what you're looking for and then use animation rigging to get it exactly as you want it. If you're not familiar with animation rigging, this is one of the most useful Unity packages I've ever used. I made a full tutorial video on it. You can go watch it if you have no idea what the package is and what it does. The main thing is it will help us achieve the examples that I mentioned in the beginning. Okay, so here I am with my character. I have the usual basic animations you expect. So I've got an idle animation. I can walk around and go anywhere. Very basic. Also, this third person controller that I'm using here is the one officially made by Unity. It's free. It's part of the start assets that I covered in another video. And for the assets themselves, over here I'm using the Synthi Studios heist pack. There's an affiliate link in the description in case you want to get it. Okay, now let's say on this game I'm controlling my character and I want to move up and grab that money over there on that desk. So I want to approach the object and press a button to pick it up. Right now I can actually do that, so I can move forward and as soon as I'm close enough I can press a button and yep there you go, I grab the object. However, as you saw, the object just vanished from the world while my character stayed perfectly standing still. So technically it worked, it grabbed the object, but of course this looks pretty bad. It would look 10 times better if the character actually grabbed the item with his hands. So let's learn how to do that. But again, remembering that I'm not an animator, if I was then I would just load whatever animation program I have and just make the animation by hand, but I have no idea how to do that. Thankfully, I do know how to use the animation rigging package. Okay, so first of all, here's the basic logic. This is my character script. All it's really doing is just doing a physics.overlap sphere in order to find all the atoms around it, tries to get a component to identify that it's an item, then if it's closed enough, it shows the icon and on a key press just destroys the item. So over here is where it would add it to an inventory or something like that. So as you can see, the logic is very simple. Now let's see how we can handle the animation. So over here, the first thing that we're going to need is set up the rig. So let's go into animation rigging and make a rig setup. Like I said, I made an entire video on the animation rigging package, really going into detail how it works and all the things that it can do. Here, I'm going to assume you know the basics of that package. Go watch that video if you don't know anything about it. Over here on the rig, let's begin by creating a new constraint. So a new game object, let's call it right hand. And let's add a new component, go into animation rigging, and we're going to want a two bone IK constraint. Now we need to drag the hand onto the tip, so let's find the right hand. So here it is, the right hand bone, so let's use this onto the tip and out of setup. Okay, so just like this if we head on play. And yep, just like this, the hand is already going straight towards the target. Now let's just rotate this so that it makes sense. So put the hand kind of like that. Now let's copy these values. And back in edit mode, let's paste the component values. And same thing for the hint, put it more to the side. The, sh the elbow should be right about here. Okay, so that's the basic setup. And now we've got the target. So this is where the hand will touch. 
Now we need this to actually place this target on top of the item. So here we actually have two options. One is very simple and one is more complex but looks much better. Either way we're going to need to make an animation so let's make it. This character is using this animator and over here I've got an idle animation so it's the one right here. So let's duplicate this one. Let's call it grab item and drag it onto the animator. Okay. So with the character selected let's just go and select the grab item animation. By the way, like I said, this animator and these animations are straight from the free star assets I mentioned a while ago. And just one quick note here, in order to make this absolutely perfect, we would probably use a separate animator layer to override just the arms instead of copy pasting from the idle animation. But I don't want to make this video too complex, so let's go with this method. If you want to learn about animation layers, it's one of the things that I cover in detail in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. So here for the two options that we have, we can record this animation and bring the target to the front. So we can just press on record and then we grab our target and we can move it around and essentially record the target position directly on the animation. So there it is, the target position. We would place the item here, then on a couple more frames, bring the item back and back. So this is one approach. However, with this, you can already probably guess the issue. The issue is what if the item is not exactly here? What if it is slightly to the side, left or right? Now, in reality, most players wouldn't notice that. So you could definitely use a method just like this one. But since we're using animation rigging, we can make it perfect, so let's actually make it perfect. What we're going to do is we're going to dynamically position this target, so it's going to be set through code, so let's actually remove this keyframe from the animation. Now in this animation, we're not going to have any position keyframe for this target object. All we're going to do in this animation is just increase the weight so the animation rigging system will smoothly move the hand to grab the item. So let's press on record and let's go into the right hand constraint. Let's start off at zero. And after some time, let's say one second, let's bring it up to one. And after grabbing the item, we're going to need to bring the hand back, but let's handle it later. Let's get this first part working first. So we just have this animation and then let's also extend it a bit in order to handle the transition later. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Just an animation increasing the two bone constraint weight. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Then on the animator, let's just make a transition from the idle onto the grab item. And this one is not going to have an exit time, but rather we're going to trigger it through a trigger. So we're here on the parameters, make a trigger called grab item. And on this trigger, we're going to run this transition. Okay, so far so good. Now back in our code here, we have the grab item logic. Now, instead of destroying the object right away, over here, let's place the target exactly on the item position. So we need a reference to that. So we place the target directly on top of the item and then we just need to trigger the animated transition. Okay, so that's it. As soon as we press the button, if we have an item, we're going to set the target onto that position and trigger the animation. So let's see if the character approaches the target and grabs the item rather than seeing the item just vanish instantly. Okay, so here we are and let's approach the table with the item and let's press the button. And yep, there you go. It did indeed bring the hand straight towards the item. Okay, so far so good. So you got the hand raising to reach the item. Now we need to handle the second part. So we want the character to actually pick up the item and take the arm to the back and then we want the item to vanish. So since for the second part we want to record the target position, let's actually make a different constraint. So let's just duplicate this one. Now let's make another animation. So let's duplicate this one, call it grab item back. And now here on this animation, we're actually going to record the position for that. So instead of the right hand, let's remove this one. So let's start recording. And for the right hand grab item, we're going to start off at zero. After a while, let's bring it up to one. And then when that is one, let's actually start moving the object. So the target, let's say it starts off here. Then after a while, let's say go off to the side and then a bit more and go to the back. Okay, so kind of like this. So the arm raises up. So it starts activating this constraint and then it moves the arm position and puts it on the back. So we do that and then we have to reset. So after a while, when the arm is there, let's go into our constraint, put it on one and after a while bring it back to zero and back into idle. Okay, so that's it. Now one very important thing is like I mentioned in that animation rigging video, the order of operations for the animation rigging system, that one is based on the order in the hierarchy. So we need to make sure that this second constraint is under the other one so it ends up overriding that one. And like I said, the reason why we had to make two separate animations and two separate constraints, that is because the first one, we want the target to be set dynamically, whereas on the second one, we want it to be animating so it actually pulls back. You cannot stop animating one part after the animation starts, so that's why you need two animations, one moving the target and one not. 
Okay, so with the animation set up, then over here on the animator, let's just make a transition going from grab item into grab item back and then going backwards. So for this transition, we do have an exit time. We just need to play around this one. So maybe at 0.9, maybe lasting for about 0.1, need to play around these values. Then same thing for the grab item back. Let's also put it something like that. Okay, so just like this, let's see if it works. Okay, so here we are. Let's approach the item and press the button. And yep, the character moved the arm to grab the item perfectly and then pull the arm back to the side, back to the back. And yep, it behaved exactly as intended. Now, obviously, the last thing missing is bringing the item with it. So we can do that easily by just changing the parent. However, first we need to know when. So for that, we can use some animation events. First, we need to make two functions. So on animation grabbed item and stored item. Then let's go into the grab item back animation. And over here, right in the beginning, let's add an animation function and let's choose that one. So this one is on animation grabbed item. So we're going to trigger that one in the beginning. And then let's see when the character brings it to the back over here. Let's add another animation event. This one on animation stored item. Now back in the code, let's change the parent to the hand bone. So let's add a reference to the hand bone. And when we have the grab item, let's change the parent. And finally, when the item is actually stored, then we can finally destroy the item. Okay, so that's it. Let's test. Once again, here is my character. Let's move close and approach the item and press the button and grab the item. And yep, the item went back. All right, great. So as you can see, the character grabs the item, pulls it back and picks up the item. So if you compare this with what we saw in the beginning where the item just disappeared, it's obvious that adding this tiny animation makes things feel much, much better. So here you see how you can make animations without actually having to make animations. Remember that throughout all of this, all we have is just a standard idle animation. So we didn't have to go into another program to make the animation. And the final result is even better than if you had taken that route because it targets the exact item perfectly. So with this simple example, you can see just how powerful it is, the animation rigging package. And you can imagine using the same process to make something like starting from an idle or walk animation and making it hold an object, or maybe walk or idle while pointing at somewhere, or maybe carry a briefcase or weapon or anything like that. So you can see how powerful this method is. You can make animations without actually having to make animations. Like I said in the beginning, I'm not an animator, but thanks to this package, I can create some animations to fit whatever unique game ideas I have. Now go ahead and make some custom dynamic animations for your own games. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.